They said there'll be snow at Christmas. Hello there, welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. This is not just any fountain pen review. This is my annual evaluation of all the pens I've purchased or received over the last 12 months. It is not the list of the top fountain pens of 2020, far from it. I'm no expert, I'm just a consumer. So these are my personal favorite fountain pen experiences of 2020. This is 2020. <laughs> I've looked back over the video reviews I've done in 2020 and it has been quite a year. Good evening, I'm Hugh Downs. And I'm Barbara Walters, and this is 2020. 2020. 2020. All of us here at 2020 have a safe and enjoyable weekend. Good night. What an honor it is for you to have me on your New Year's Eve special. <laughs> I've produced 88 video reviews of different fountain pens over the last 12 months, and will probably be an even 90 by the end of the month. Some pens were on loan, others gifts, but most of them were purchased with my own money and not sponsored by any company or retailer. In choosing just 10 out of that group, I sat down and thought about which pens were inked all the time, which pens did I reach for most when I wrote in my journal each night, and which bring me the most joy to look at, to hold, and most importantly, to write with. I also thought about which pens I felt actually improved how I feel about my handwriting. I got the list down to 10 pens. Then I thought about how to present them. Should they be in ranked order? And of course, whenever I have to rank something as a retired professor, I have to quantify what I am assessing and create a rubric or an evaluation criteria to weight each of the elements. So I made a spreadsheet. And I created assessment criteria and I ranked them and the spreadsheet gave me the results. And typical with empirical assessments, it didn't match how I felt about the pen's ranking at all. So I created another chart, which was how I subjectively felt about each one of the pens. So join me now to see how my top 10 fountain pen experiences ranked for 2020, and which will win out over the other, my left brain or my right, right now. <laughs> So I've decided what I'm going to do is introduce each one of these pens in alphabetical order and talk a little bit about why the pen made my top 10 list for 2020. Then I will show you how I ranked them, both by data and then just by subjective preference. So let's get started in alphabetical order. The first pen alphabetically on the list is this Leonardo Furore Grande Verde Smeraldo. It is interesting that this pen comes up first. This is the only pen I've ever received from a pen manufacturer for free. I was gifted this pen by the owner designer of Leonardo Alfazzina Italiana, Salvatore Matrone. He gave it to me to produce a video review on the pen and make the announcement that his company is changing from Bach to Yovo as the supplier of their nibs. As of January 1st, 2021, all Leonardo pens will sport nibs from Yovo. This may be an amazing and expensive gift from a pen manufacturer, but it in no way influenced my assessment of this pen's quality or performance. It makes my top 10 list this year because it is an incredible writing experience number one, and because it is also drop dead freaking gorgeous. Look at this. <laughs> I don't even have to write with this pen. I could just admire it all day long. But the pen is magnificent on the page and in the hand, and it has remained inked since I opened it, and I write with it at least once a week. This is a piston filler, and it holds a ton of ink. I should also mention here that the Grande comes with a bottle of Leonardo ink, and this Leonardo Blue has become one of my favorites. It is very similar to Iroshizuku Kanpeki, which I adore, but it has a pinkish red sheen that is quite amazing. And next we have another Leonardo, the Furore Salt. This was the second Leonardo I bought because I was so taken with the first one, which we will see in a moment. This pen almost did not make the list, but just last Wednesday, 
I had Jack Hernandez custom grind the broad nib into an exquisite architect italic and it has shot to the top of my list this icy white and gold pen is gorgeous to look at fits beautifully in the hand and with this newly cut nib it's just like writing with a chiseled paintbrush which brings me to my first Leonardo the Leonardo Memento Zero Blue Hawaii I never thought I'd own anything this beautiful but this Memento Zero in the Ferrari Salt almost made my worst pen experiences of 2020 list in fact I might mention them on that list anyway when I bought this Leonardo I purchased two nibs a medium that was on the pen and an extra broad steel nib when the pen and two nibs arrived both of the stock Bach nibs refused to write so this beautiful pen became a huge disappointment to me I had just made the acquaintance of Jack Hernandez and asked him to tune the medium nib and cut the broad nib into an architect italic something I was interested in having done anyway he made the broad Bach nib this one into the finest writing instrument I own spoiler alert there and both the Ferrari and the Momento Zero have a nice feature where you can access the captured converter by removing this blind cap but let's just take a moment to admire this spaghetti resin in blue Hawaii this pen is well named blue Hawaii because you can see the blue sky the azure waters of the Pacific and the sandy hues of the beaches in the acrylic and that takes care of the L's and we're on to the M's the Aurora's and the Bexley's and the Carandash are going to have to wait until I sell a few things to afford those A-lister pens on to Moon Man and the Moon Man M800 Galaxy this pen is on my top 10 list regardless of its notoriety as a shameless copy of the Leonardo Memento Zero it is quite simply jaw-droppingly beautiful and of course as comfortable in my hand as the Memento Zero I wouldn't even know about Leonardo if it weren't for this M800 but it wouldn't even be close to being a top 10 of 2020 if I hadn't pulled the standard ho-hum moon man nib and replaced it with this amazing pen BBS fine mini food a two-toned steel nib the nib itself was one of two given to me by pen friend Luke Moreau thanks Luke I write with this pen constantly and now the moon man p135 or should I call it a moon blanc p135 I was surprised I liked this pen so much it doesn't have a number six size nib and it isn't a large pen by any stretch but it is beautifully balanced both posted and unposted and it has a wonderful mini food style number five size steel nib which is smooth and wet and just writes and writes and writes I love the etched cap those patterns and the deep burgundy body I found I was reaching for this pen constantly so it made my list and now we have an opus this opus 88 Bella Japanese style eyedropper makes the top 10 because of its unusual size Wesley what about the RUSs rodents of unusual size I don't think they exist an amazing comfort in the hand but also because this broad and very bouncy steel nib is just exquisite for long writing sessions this pen rivals one of my favorite ergonomic writing pens the pen bbs 323 it has a huge ink capacity an incredible swirly resin and i'm guessing this won't be my last opus 88 kudos to the taiwan based opus 88 company for a fine reasonably priced and unique writing instrument and now for the peas there aren't any pilots on the list this year even though I write with my precious pilot e95 s almost every day this pen has not been without ink since I got it for Christmas 2019 from my wife 
it made my top 10 list last year. But there is a Pen BBS. Surprise, surprise. If I was assessing from which company I purchased the most pens in 2020, it would be Pen BBS. I simply think Pen BBS is the most innovative and incredibly reasonably priced quality fountain pen on the market today. The range of models available, the filling systems, eyedroppers, range of incredible turned acrylics, it's all really quite staggering. And they are all in the $25 to $50 US range. The people that run the company love fountain pens. That's just really clear. They are in it for the love of putting nib to paper and writing with ink. So there were two Pen BBS pens that made my top 10 list this year. And of course, one nib has already shown up on my M800 right there. But I made those two pens into one. That is because I like one model better than the other, but I like the nib on the second model better. So I swapped them. And the best Pen BBS for me in 2020 is this Pen BBS 456 vacuum filler in Amber is a Cat. The 456 is, in my opinion, the best pound for pound, dollar for dollar, and euro for euro vacuum filler on the market. It is beautiful, balanced, and it writes like butter. They like butter. They like butter. Now let's talk. Listening to your story, I'm a little verklempt myself. No one here. Just a little verklempt. Hold on. Talk amongst yourselves. And we're not done with the peas yet. And I've reviewed quite a few platinum pens this year. The Preppy, the Profonte, the Plaisir, and then this, the Platinum President. I'd been jonesing for a Platinum 3776 for a long time, and I was close to getting one when I found out about the President. This pen solved my reticence about the 3776. I felt that the 3776 was too short and too thin for my grip. This President, I'm just going to go ahead and call this a Mont Blanc 146 clone, <gasps> is much more substantial in the hand and has the same classic elegance of the Mont Blanc from which it borrowed its inspiration. The nib is a gorgeous nod to Art Deco styling and writes with a smooth feedback that everyone says is Platinum's trademark. You truly have to feel it to know what it is. And we skipped the T's for Twisby. Sorry Twisby fans, maybe next year. And we're down to the W's. And this Waterman Cadenne. I won't tell you yet where this pen ranks in the top 10 list, but I will tell you that this is my overwhelming favorite fountain pen purchase of 2020. This Waterman Karen in amber and gold is stunning, yes, but how I got it and what I paid for it factor into the pen each time I write with it. And it writes beautifully. And it is beautiful. I mean, just look at that gorgeous 18 karat inlaid nib. Holy schmeck. Holy shit! I had eyeballed the Karen ever since I had learned about it because it is so similar to my vintage Schaefer Targa with that beautiful 14 karat gold inlaid nib. I understood I'd never be able to afford one of these, but I looked and drooled anyway. You know, pass gas. I got an instant message one day from Claudia with a link. The Amber Karen with a fine nib was almost $100 Canadian below the normal price. I learned that Waterman has a free nib exchange program where you can send in the entire Karen section and, if it is unused, they will send you another size, just for free. So I bought the pen immediately, got it the next day on Amazon, and sent the section off to France to be replaced by a medium nib. It all took about 10 days to complete, and I have this amazing pen. I will write with this pen forever, and it is constantly inked, and I write with it at least every other day. And last but not least, the Wingsong 601 Flighter. This is another pen that makes my top 10 list and is a total surprise to me that it has. I buy a lot of pens that I know aren't really my personal preference or style, but simply to review them. My channel is just me and my guitar and my cutaways of Family Guy without pens. Oh crap! 
This was another Chinese Parker 51 style clone. Now Parker 51 type pens don't thrill me. They are thin and write like nails. I have this 1954 Parker 51 with a gold nib on a semi-permanent loan from a good friend. And even though this is a classic, it still writes with a nail and with no character. Enter the Wingsung 601 Flighter. It has the same size and shape as the Classic 51, but the nib is one I purchased from Bobby on Etsy. It is a mini fude or what Bobby calls Bobby Bent nib. I bought the nib at the same time as the pen and the moment the pen arrived I removed the stock nib and replaced it with this Bobby Bent nib. I've used this pen almost every day since. It writes and it writes and it never fails. It is smooth. The line has character. The pen is totally cool looking and has a modern version of the classic vacuumatic piston pump. I've even purchased a new grip hood in the same brushed steel as the rest of the pen to see how that will make the pen look. It should be here soon and then the pen will really look like it is ready for flight. So those are the pens on my list. Now let's look how they rank and do some writing samples. So this is the spreadsheet I used to evaluate the empirical data of the pens. The criteria are nib, ergonomics, looks, filling system, and price. The quality of the nib has a higher weight at five points where the other criteria are just four. I just simply asked myself how I felt about each of the various criteria for each pen and then had the spreadsheet rank the pens accordingly. For filling systems I gave higher marks for piston and vacuum filler pens with larger capacities over cartridge converters which all got two. I must say the spreadsheet disappointed me as it ranked them all wrong. So I did it again with another spreadsheet where I simply asked myself what were my favorites. The objective evaluation I did first helped as it showed me immediately how badly I felt when a favorite pen ranked too low. You'll see how my feelings about these pens Biden, I don't say Trump anymore, the cold data points evaluation every time. Now let's do some writing samples in my ranked order starting with number 10. The Opus 88 Bella Red. Didn't I ever tell you about Bumbles? Bumbles bounce! And our quote. And number nine, the Moon Man P one thirty five. At the Grinch's small heart grew three sizes that day. And our quote. And number eight, the Platinum President.
and our quote. And number seven, the Wing Song 601 Flighter. I've killed it. Oh, everything I touch gets ruined. And for our quote, and number six, the Pen BBS 456, Amber is a Cat. Good idea, Ernie, a toast <laughs> to my big brother George, the richest man in town. <laughs> And our quote, and number five, the Moon Man M800 Galaxy. That's the end of the parade anyway. There's nothing else to see except guys cleaning up horse poop. And that doesn't thrill me at all. And number four, the Leonardo Ferrari Salt. Let us ask ourselves what he would wish for most. And then let each put in his share. Loving kindness, warm hearts, and the stretched out hand of tolerance. All the shining gifts that make peace on earth. This is an architect italic. And number three, the Leonardo Ferrari Grande Smeraldo.
And for our quote, And number two, the waterman cut in amber. No, no, I want an official red under cover and I shoot you and kill you my leg rifle. You'll shoot your eye out, kid. And for our quote, and number one, the Leonardo Momento Zero Blue Hawaii. Drum roll. Oh, oh, uh, joy to the world. And for a quote, and the runner up this year is this Jinhao Centennial in the sky blue. I call it ice blue. I took the stock Jinhao nib out of the pen and swapped this glorious italics broad cursive italic generously donated to me by Eric Rollo. This pen has done all of the titles for each of the pens. In the frozen land of Nador they were forced to eat Robin's minstrels and there was much rejoicing. And it is in I mean Jack Frost. And this is the Jinhao Centennial. Ice blue. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And don't forget to set your virtual dials for the same bat time, same bat channel next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. Only contributing to the delinquency of minors. Where I will present my worst pen experiences of 2020. Something to look forward to. A Boxing Day Spectacular. I hope to see you then. And for you Wednesday morning video fans, next Wednesday, Christmas Eve, I will be presenting a pen video entitled Clone Wars, The Revenge of the Duofold, where I'll look at the new Wingsong 670 and compare it to the other Duofold pretenders. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote. Bingo. I made this.